So you're gonna have your guard, right? And then I'm gonna be here. So my posture is the most important thing I have going for me mm -hmm. in someone's close guard. Mm -hmm. And you can see if I'm like this here, mm -hmm. you can hold your guard all day long. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's relaxed. Yeah. Now, there's a big difference between this yeah. <laughs> and this, yeah. right? Uh -huh. Now I have your guard in tension. Mm -hmm. And typically around a couple minutes of doing this mm -hmm. and your guard's gonna start to open. Mm -hmm. And you know this happens because yes. you'll see people start doing this. Yeah, they'll start to switch around. They start to switch yeah. the guard. Uh -huh. That means okay, the guard's already tired. Now. Mm -hmm. Right. So, to in order to do that, there's a, there's a few things that we have to do. Right? Switch this way. So, first is my positioning of my knees. I typically want my knees just a little bit wider than shoulder length, lateral stability. Mm -hmm. Right. Second is my feet. I'm on my toes. On both feet. Okay. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people don't like this because they feel it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. because it is. Yeah. But it gives me dexterity mm -hmm. because if I'm laying flat on my ankles, mm -hmm. this might feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. But what will end up happening if you were to give like a good forward push to me here? You, it's not possible with your hands, but with your hips you can. Um, I mean, like pushing forward. Like yeah. That? There's yeah. a way where you, if you sit up, mm -hmm. put one elbow down, mm -hmm. reach across. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you start driving into me here, yeah. I have no way of pushing back from me. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm toast. Yeah. So right? I can like get up on top of you. If I'm on my toes though, yeah. if you start doing that same drive, yeah, I got my whole uh -huh. lower body now able to push. Yeah. So that's one reason I like it. Mm -hmm. The second is it elevates my hips, mm -hmm. and the higher my hips are over yours, the less leverage you have with your guard. Mm -hmm. Particularly when we start doing submissions, when I'm very low like this. My elbow's right in the dead zone there, right from mm -hmm. my armbar. And then here, now I'm up. Yeah. So that means your hips have to travel up yeah. to meet my elbow. Yeah. Versus when I'm here, mm -hmm. all you gotta do is throw your leg over and then I'm in armbar. Mm -hmm. Turn to it. So on my toes, shoulder length, mm -hmm. uh, like again, uh, knee distance. Mm -hmm. Next one is very important is my hips. I don't want my hips here. I get, how would you say this? You know, there's like an anterior toe. Anterior yeah. toe, you went the opposite, right? Yeah. Right. Because mm -hmm. you see, yeah. that stretches your guard, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, then the next thing, my hands. Mm -hmm. This is danger zone, putting my hands yeah, up you high. Can you can yeah. grab, you can mm -hmm. manipulate them, mm -hmm. all that. I want my hands, and this is also danger zone. Uh, just because you, you, of, you like, could do this, sure, you can yeah. grab my wrist here easily. Mm -hmm. The Kimura setup happens mm -hmm. all from there, right? Right underneath the rib cage. Mm -hmm. I use the rib cage as kind of like a hook mechanism, mm -hmm. yeah. and then I'm pushing away mm -hmm. to help stretch the guard. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Enough, you know, we've already been here for a bit, the guard's already yeah, getting tired, yeah. right? <laughs> so you don't worry about holding it the whole yeah. time, right? So that's the next thing. So knees, toes, hips, hands. Mm -hmm. Last one, head. Super important. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be making eye contact with you. Mm -hmm. It's already weird enough in your legs, right? <laughs> yeah. I want to be up here. Mm -hmm. Why? Puts my neck in a strong posture. Mm -hmm. You know, I can have all this good. You grab my head and pull me down right now. Strong. I'm going to fall. Yeah. It's my next week. Uh -huh. I'm here. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. hard to reach. Yeah, it's harder to reach. Even if you can't reach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even if I can. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's like a Muay Thai, uh -huh. what they call the yeah, tight clinch, yeah. pump clinch. You don't put your head down because that's how you get yanked yeah. and knee. Uh -huh. right? Here, uh -huh. when I get my neck kind of, I don't want to like lock it out, yeah. but up high. So the moment I do feel someone trying to clinch, mm -hmm. I can lock it out and it keeps me up. Yeah. It makes it very hard. You won't get, I won't get triangle choked here ever. Yeah. Right? I'm way too yeah. high. Yeah. Your hips have to travel all the way up here. Up high, yeah. So you, yeah. you have to really shoot up. Yeah. Right? Again, when I'm low like this, your hips just like a couple inches and you can boom, yeah. get a good grip. Right? So those five elements create a strong base. Boom. Right here. Right? So that's what I'm looking to do. Because that's going to make it hard for you to pull me down and that's going to put me in position to attack. Mm. Right? So let's practice that real quick. So, I'm going to it here. Knees on your toes. Stretch your hips, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you can yeah, feel the tension, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And then this might be too far for you, right? Just depending. You might 
yeah. bring it like like yeah 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 it's, yeah, it yeah, takes a little attention now yeah, yeah exactly uh -huh. and like over here like keep practicing that right head yeah. up high yeah. again you don't have to look at me yeah. yeah even if I get a good grip on your neck yeah yeah it's difficult uh -huh. right yeah that's what you want it again if you have all this good but your head's down right like relax your neck here real quick yeah doesn't matter yeah, yeah all this is yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you know it better than me right yeah, yeah. that's weak yeah. the whole chain yeah. collapses uh -huh. makes sense yeah and this is something most people don't do yeah right because everybody's trying to look like mm -hmm. you don't need to look to know where i'm at right i'm, yeah. I'm right underneath you yeah so uh -huh. it's really easy to, I and mean, then this gives you better resistance for pulling mm -hmm. yeah right so then close guard and right now yeah eh, good you see, it's not so passive. It's a little bit of active work. No, you're completely like active right here. Yeah, <laughs> right. Your hips are constantly flexing, but yeah. it's uh, my feet right now is slipping, mm -hmm. slipping. Yeah, like a little bit. Just keep yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And now we'll open it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal for us. We yeah. want to get so the guard create tension open. and guard yourself. And, yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. So you're putting yourself in a safe position where you could so, strike if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And wearing me out at the same time, because uh -huh. this is an endurance that I don't get to recover. Mm -hmm. Once my guard starts to break, mm -hmm. that means it's going to break for the rest of the fight, mm -hmm. right? So that's why there was a study done by uh, I think it was Eric Paulson, old school MMA guy, and he's, he watched like a bunch of fights, and he's like, he knows that the close guard starts to fail in MMA after three minutes. Mm -hmm. If a guy's been grounded for three minutes, that guard will fail and becomes pretty useless mm -hmm. like they, you won't be able to hold someone down yeah effectively so that's what we want as a top five. okay so we're back down we'll do some that's what i call a striking base mm -hmm. right because this is the best position for me to strike from a closed guard because mm -hmm. i have a lot of leverage yeah. to yeah. throw down yeah. boom yeah. And, and strike uh -huh. here but a lot of times we're not here mm -hmm. we might get pulled in for example i just I slipped and you pulled me yeah, in. Yes. Yeah, oh, you got me here. Yeah. And then this is what I call a broken base, right? It's like I have nothing here. Yeah. This is your territory, right? So I have to work my way back out, right? So in order to do so, I have to do something called framing, right? And framing is simply using my forearm or the palm mm -hmm. to push off, mm -hmm. usually around your chin, neckline. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're here and you have me tight, boom. Frame and when I frame, I'm trying to get my arms on the inside because mm -hmm. once I can get my arms on the inside, I can set up here, and this is what I call a grappling base. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I can't really, I can strike here, but not too effectively because mm -hmm. I'm still low. Yeah, you know, I can like throw little shots, little body shots here, but this is more for controlling my opponent. Mm -hmm. I uh, particularly, let's say I'm going against a guy who's a K1 kickboxer, I don't want him to stand up, I'll be here. So I can keep my head in the middle of your chest, mm -hmm. like this, you're not, you're not getting up. Right? Yeah. Right? And you're not too effective here either, you know, they could kind of... Yeah, right. stand still right here. Yeah. <laughs> right? But from here, I could then work up to mm -hmm. my striking base here, right? And then create that tension mm -hmm. in my guard. Yeah. Right? So those are the three of the postures that we work in, right? So, for example, you pull me back in, you have an overhook, and look to frame. Now, when the guy gets an overhook like this, mm -hmm. this makes it a little bit harder to get out. Like, yeah. They can't just yoke yeah. out, right? So generally, there's two schools of thought here. Mm -hmm. One, I gotta work this arm out, yeah. and then I gotta pull, but I have to rotate my hand. Right now, it's palm into your back. Uh -huh. If I pull, I'm pulling you up. Yeah. So I have to roll my arm out, mm -hmm. right? So now my palm is, I rotated my shoulder. Mm -hmm. and this gives me an angle to pull out. Yeah. That comes with its own dangers though, because yeah. there's other submissions like Komoplata and whatnot I can get caught in. But, yeah. that, but in order to slip out of this, yeah. I'm gonna turn away, yeah. boom, and then look to mm -hmm. establish the control. Yeah. The other way I can work out of this, if you're holding in, is rather than try to pull out, I grind in. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Because yeah. at a certain point, you're not gonna want me like all my weight on your chin, yeah. driving into uh -huh. you, and then it makes it easier yeah. to slip my arm out. Uh -huh. But once I slip out, my grappling base is here. Mm -hmm. The important thing with the grappling base is the head in the center. You remember how I was telling you you could sit up before? Like, mm -hmm. So put an elbow on the, the ground, uh -huh. put this foot on the ground, so opposite limbs, and now 
reach over and sit up. So, yeah. And exactly, you see, you can wrap around my neck here, right? And this is generally how you're gonna end up standing up will be from a position like this. If I have my head in the center though, if you try to do that sit up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kick, mm -hmm. because I'm getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we're in this grappling base, I have the head here, because now I know you can't get up. Even when you try to sit up, I'm gonna be able to keep my head in front of your chest, yeah. whichever side. Uh -huh. Right, so it's a good stalling position. Okay. So we'll switch it up. I'll be on top here, and then I'm gonna start off pulling you in. Okay. So from here, you practice your framing. So you're essentially getting the forearm, boom, right there, and again, you're in the driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to create right. that space. Now, as I you frame to create space, you get your other arm on the inside. So, so. here, yeah, boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now yeah. you could shoot straight up there, mm -hmm. or you remember when we the way I was teaching you to go into that grappling base where you're gonna control the biceps. So let's say you, I have you tight like this. Uh -huh. You frame your way to create some space, and now just stay on the biceps, head in the center of the chest. Thank you. Yeah. Am I controlling my arms? Exactly, and I, I can't really sit up here that well. All right, so a good stalling position. Should I be like this, or should you, I be like You could be there, that's fine. You could grab the biceps, all right? The same type of thing. Boom. And let's say you lost control of my arms. You're doing a good job of controlling my arms, but let's say you're just yeah. here. Even if I try to stop. <laughs> exactly. So you use your head, keep me flat, right? Then you can posture up, get in there, yep. And then head up, yep. Good. And then hips, and Yeah. And you can feel the stretch, yeah. right? We're gonna go over breaking next, right? But these are the things you can do here. So. Like I said, the only problem with this is there's a lot of space, which means if I wanted to escape, right, mm -hmm. it allows me to create room. Yeah. Now, depending on the situation, you might not care. Yeah. Right? But again, I'm Anderson Silva. You don't want me standing up in yeah. any point yeah, of the yeah, fight, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna stay in the grappling base, right? So if you come back down, mm -hmm. more like this, yeah. control so, the arms, okay. hand the side of the chest, right? Yeah, exactly. You just stuck the space. Yep. I try to move my hips. You, right? You stay square. You're staying tight. Yeah. You suffocate me pretty much. But if I was uh, a juicer guy, then you don't care if I stand up. You're like, oh, I'll make my day. Yeah. 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 Yeah.